I just want to bring you over here by my Monstera for a second to show you the leaf that I talked about squishing on when I was staking this up in my Monstera Deliciosa wrestling video. Just wanted to show it to you because it popped out and it's doing okay. It's got a little bit of damage right on the tip of the leaf, but other than that, it's it's doing fine. I thought I maybe like totally destroyed it when it was still in its sheath, but it seems like it's gonna be good. <laughs> Everyone, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. So for this video, I'm going to be doing some emergency plant care. Last night, this plant snapped, it fell over. Okay, you guys, I was just sitting here minding my own business and my philodendron giganteum fell over and snapped. So <laughs> I've got to repot it. It was already on my list of things that I wanted to do in my like really big plant chores video from last time. So I guess this plant has told me exactly what it wants. It needs a repotting and it needs a better stake. So I'm gonna do that. I just wanted to show it to you just now because it just fell over and my husband noticed it actually. I was like looking in the other direction. He was like, ah, and so <laughs> it fell um, and it made a snapping sound and I'm actually not even sure what the extent of the damage is. <gasps> The bamboo pole snapped. The plant, this plant just broke a bamboo pole. I'm impressed. Gigantium, I'm impressed with you. That was the snapping sound. It was the bamboo pole snapping. So I really, really need to repot this plant today. So that's what we're gonna start with. And then right here, I've got my pothos that was from the wall that used to be behind me. I stuck it in a different room in my apartment and just left it in a pile on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and chop it into a million pieces. Let's just get into it. So before I added the pole to this plant, I had it growing in a really, really bright light location right over by my windows, kind of by where I keep my like largest monstera. And around the same time when I added the pole to this plant, I also moved this plant into a really low light spot. Um, and the reason for that was because I was treating it for spider mites and while it was recovering, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't touching any of my other plants. So it basically took over my dining room table. And if you've been watching my channel, you've probably seen this gigantium in the background sitting on that table. And it's been sitting there for many months now. Since I put it there, an interesting thing has happened. Plants are said to get leggy when they stretch out and when the interdote lengths get really long. So the internode is just like it sounds, it's the space inter in between the different nodes on a plant. And a lot of times the length of that internode is directly related to whether or not the plant is getting sufficient light. And when plants aren't getting enough light, they tend to get etiolated, leggy. They stretch out as they're reaching for their light source. And so plants that grow in a really bright light location tend to have very small internodes. Whereas plants, when they get put in a low light condition, get really stretched out and those internodes get really long. So on this plant, it's a really good example of that in my opinion. After I moved it into a darker location, the internodal length got so, so, so long. So you can see the top, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, like six leaves take up, they stretch from, from here all the way to here. It's like more than two feet of plant stem. Whereas prior to that, all of the rest of the leaves on the plant, like, I don't know, 10 or so leaves, only take up like a foot of space. Um, and that's because the internodes were really short. So this plant really wants to move back into the light. I think what I'm gonna do is rather than just pot this into another pot, I'm gonna propagate this. I'm gonna chop this way back, all the way back down to where the internodes are really close together. When you do have this legginess on a plant, a lot of times it actually is a really good opportunity for propagation because the plant has sort of given you some extra space to work with. Got my rubbing alcohol, just to sanitize my shears. All right, you guys, I'm cutting it. We're gonna do it. It's always hard to cut plants, but when I first bought this gigantium, it was really small and very damaged. Philodendron gigantium is extremely resilient in my experience. Let's go ahead and just make some cut. I'm gonna take off this whole big top section. You can always cut more, can't cut less. So I'm gonna just start here. Ouch, you guys. <laughs> so sad to cut this off. Okay, 
Okay, and then after feeling intense doubt and regret after making a cut, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this rooting powder and I'm gonna just stick some of it on the fresh cut. Don't touch the wound. It can be like really tempting to get all up in there and like look at it and stuff like that, but I personally try to like keep my distance from the fresh cuts because um, I mean, humans and plants don't really tr transmit diseases to each other, you guys, but I feel like if this plant is gonna get some kind of bacteria or something in its cut, it's gonna be from me breathing on it or, you know, from like moving the air around too much or touching it or just, I don't know, maybe like something is in my hair and it falls onto the open wound, whatever it is. I mean, there's, we become experts in imagining disease transmission these past few years, you guys. So you can imagine the ways that bacteria could make its way onto an open wound. So what I like to do is take some brooding powder um, and just dump it onto the open cut. It's not because I'm trying to get it to grow roots there or anything like that. Rooting powder, or I think it's also called like cloning powder too. I think um, the cannabis industry likes to call it cloning rather than propagating. All of these powders are mostly diatomaceous earth, I'm pretty sure, and then it's like less than 1% whatever the active ingredient is. 0.1% of its active ingredient, which is like a growth hormone. So I, I don't really think you ever need to worry about putting too much of this stuff on a plant. This is a new leaf here at the top. It just opened up and popped out like, I don't know, maybe two days ago. I don't really know what's gonna happen to it. A lot of times when you propagate, if you have a leaf that's like still juvenile and developing, it's not uncommon to lose that leaf. I normally would probably wait until that newer leaf is a little bit more mature before propagating, but because this plant fell over last night, I figured I should just cut it up now. when the cuttings are exposing like a big section of plant. So like if it was like a little lining plant, I might not use the rooting powder because there isn't that much of an exposed wound. Some people also use wax to seal up the ends of cuttings, a little bit of hot, clean wax, um, but I've never done that before. So now we can begin the repot. Honestly, guys, I, <laughs> I don't feel like doing this right now, but we're gonna do it anyway. So, I was going to film this video yesterday and I opened up a new bag of soil that I've had sitting in my bathroom for a couple of months. I like to use this, um, uh, this indoor potting soil, which has um, just like some big wood chips in it. It's got rocks and it's really splintery. I don't know, I'm always getting splinters when I use this with my bare hands. It's, it's a pretty coarse potting medium that doesn't have any compost in it. I usually don't leave a sealed bag just sealed up indefinitely. And this time when I opened up the bag, it was really moldy. And if I had outdoor space, I would just take that whole bag of soil and open it up and leave it outside in the sun because I'm pretty sure that would take care of the problem. But there is just this weird mold and I can show you some footage. It's these little white moldy balls. And so I don't actually know what kind of mold that is. I have a feeling that it's probably something harmless, but 
I didn't want to use that soil. It already had something growing in it. And these soil bags are like $5, maybe $5 and some change. So I just went out yesterday and I bought another bag of soil. But yeah, you guys, it is my dream to have a little bit of outdoor space exactly for stuff like this. I would love to grow some food, you guys. That's my dream. I've been calling it FOMO, fear of missing out on melons. <laughs> I wish so badly that I could have like 10 square feet of space where I could do things like air out moldy soil and maybe like grow some cucumbers that I could eventually pickle or some melons or just some food. Anyway, I'm, I'm dying for the dream of having a little bit of outdoor space someday. Anyway, let's pot this plant. Let's repot this plant. I don't know if turning this sideways made any sense. <laughs> So, I forgot that I put all these rocks at the bottom of the pot. This is from back in my days of working at the sill, putting rocks at the bottom of all the pots. <laughs> this pot does have a drainage hole. The sill, if you're not aware um, of that plant shop chain, they are one of the originators of the um, put rocks at the bottom of your pots without drainage holes myth. As I recently learned an interesting thing about lava rocks and why sometimes plants come potted in lava rocks and why sometimes the same plant doesn't. Like if you ever buy a big uh, Dracaena tree or sometimes like cast iron plants, um, you know, big tropicals. I learned that when they come potted in lava rocks, it's usually because they were grown in Hawaii and they were imported from Hawaii. At least in California, the plants that you buy from stores that come already potted in lava rocks are usually sold by a seller who grows their stock up in Hawaii. Okay, so... To the people who have expressed concern about my furniture, um, <laughs> when I do repottings and I scrape all these rocks around and stuff. I appreciate that you're looking out for me, but this table, I found it in the trash. Um, <laughs> so if you've ever noticed that my coffee table looks terrible, like the surface of it has all of these like watermarks and I don't know, problems, because I found this in the trash. The building I live in has a lot of students that move in and out of here, and there's a lot of free furniture that gets left in the garbage area of my apartment on like a very regular basis, you guys. So you would be shocked to learn how much of the furniture that I've gotten here was completely free. Um, everyone seems to buy that same Ikea set and then throw it out. So <laughs> all my furniture somehow matches. Um, I would love to have a nice coffee table someday that I'll take better care of, but for now, uh, this is just my repotting table too. Hey. I just realized that I can't find the rest of the steak. You know how I told you that this broke? I don't know where the rest of it went. Hooray, I don't see any mold in this soil bag, so that's good news. <laughs> from perlite. Okay, so.
So, here is our fillet engine gigantium, and it is now officially staked up. So, let me try to show you the whole plant. There it is. So, it's not looking, you know, as big as it was before, clearly, because I cut it back, but now it's got the support that it's been wanting, and I think I'm gonna go put it back over by my window, especially now that I staked up my monstera over there in the last video, and I created some room. So, I'm gonna go put it over there. gigantium that have a catafil, the little sheath that the new leaves develop in. Um, sometimes some philodendrons have one that doesn't necessarily come off on its own. It just kind of stays there looking like a little yucky little dead bit. Um, before sticking propagations in the water, I like to try to remove those because I've noticed that um, sometimes the little dead bits are the parts that start to mold and get gross in the water. Um, so I like to try to pull those off. But don't do damage to the plant because sometimes they're still kind of like alive and like attached down at the bottom. Um, kind of like if you ever like pull a hangnail or something and then you pull it too far and it hurts. I think it's kind of the same for the plant sometimes with these catafils. Um, try to take off the dead part if you can before sticking it in water, but um, don't like rip it off with vigor because you might actually do some damage to the base of the node there. So, all right. I feel like this is like a cute little cut floral arrangement now. So this is gonna look cute while these plants start to propagate in here. It's kind of a tight squeeze to get these pieces in. So when I notice growth, you know, I'm gonna have to just carefully pull them out, but I like the way that this looks for now. Oh, I forgot the little baby, this one in there too. Um, so yeah, I'm just showing you how I'm gonna leave these for now, but I'm probably not gonna put water in here until later tonight, maybe even tomorrow, just to be safe that the wounds that I cut have created a little bit of like a, a scab, a little bit of a callus. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave these in this jar for now. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna just like uh, recap for a second what happened. If this plant had never gotten spider mites, I would not have these propagations. So sometimes on your plant journey, things that are bad, like a pest or something like that, create a situation where ultimately um, it's not so bad after all. Wait a second, you guys, I can't find that little bamboo stick piece again. I think I must have put it back into the pot with the rest of the gigantium. Uh, it was destined to be with the roots of that plant. <laughs> okay, one of the things I wanted to do was prune up this Dracaena. So I've got this um, big Dracaena tree over here. Let's see if I can kind of show it to you in this tall pot and sometimes when I film facing this way you can kind of see it. I included it in my really big plant tour and I talked about it and if you watch my big plant tour you might notice that this tree looks exactly the same as it did like a year ago so uh yeah not that much is happening with it except for that I do get some browning lower leaves and I haven't removed them in a while so I'm just gonna go through and take some of those leaves off now. Okay, and then I just wanted to show you a little demo of cutting off the brown tips on Dracaena. I think like chances are if you have Dracaena like this, you have brown tips on your plant. It's just one of those things that happens when you bring these into an indoor environment. A lot of people put them in really low light conditions because they get labeled all the time as a low light plant. I'm guilty of this myself, even though this plant would love even some direct sun and high humidity. My only advice for the brown tip pruning is to trim it on the brown side of the damage rather than on the green side. Um, this might be obvious to you, but this is something that in the plant shop, I'm always telling customers and it's like a revelation for them. Um, if you prune your plants on the green side of the damage, it's gonna turn brown and it's gonna continue browning. Um, and leaves like this that have a brown tip, a lot of times, you know, they do over time continue to eventually crisp up and brown. But I've noticed that if you cut through the green part of the leaf, 
it tends to brown up faster than if you just cut off the brown part. So, and just leave, leave a little bit of it on the edge. I know it's not perfect, but I think ultimately the leaves die back more slowly when you cut on the brown side for the damage. So thought I would just tell you my little pruning trick. I feel like it looks a little better, right? I missed, I missed some up there. I feel like a lot of the leaves on this plant are still some of the original leaves that were kind of damaged when I got it. I mean, I'm not trying to make excuses, but when I bought this plant, it was from a big box store and it was like given to me at a discount because it was so like messed up looking when I first found it. Um, and a lot of the leaves were quite damaged on it. And I think like over time, anywhere that there was like a bent leaf, it ultimately is, becomes a leaf that turns brown and dies. So I still have a lot of leaves on here that you know, aren't great. And because I've kept this plant in pretty much the dark the whole time I've had it, it's barely grown any new leaves at all. So yeah, it is what it is. I think it looks a little better. Okay, <laughs> let's do this pothos now. Okay guys, so now we're gonna pot up this pothos that used to live on this wall up here that I took down a couple of plant chores videos ago and I can link to that in the description in case you haven't seen it. But basically this pothos is very, very long. It's huge um, and it grew all over this wall and then it started to defoliate all along the base of the vines. So when this plant is expanded into its full form, there's a lot of it that like you can see here has no leaves on it. So I don't know, this plant is ready for propagation and I said in that video I was going to chop it into a bunch of pieces. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. So I'm just gonna have no mercy and start cutting this thing back. I think I maybe don't even need to untangle it because I'm gonna cut it all the way back to the pot. Um, so let's do it. Wow, look at this plant, you guys. <laughs> so this is even smaller than it was when I first got it. Like when I first bought this plant, I think I walked home with it and I had to hold it up in the air because the vines were quite long to begin with. So in my entire time of owning this plant, it's never been this small. <laughs> so I don't know, I actually thought I was gonna feel really sad cutting it back, but I don't even feel sad. I feel like it's not even as bald in this pot as I thought it was gonna be. So I'm just gonna leave this. Okay, so let's keep going with the propagation. So now I've got all of these vines that I just separated. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna propagate it at every single node. I'm not even gonna look for the end of the vine. I'm just gonna start cutting it. Totally savage style. Now I've got all of these vines left. This is all of the defoliated plants. There's so much of it. Um, and 
If this was a rare plant, I would probably try to propagate this. You can do like wet stick propagation. I'm sure that if I planted these, they would grow into something. I mean, they would grow into pothos. They wouldn't turn into something else, but I'm, I'm sure if I planted these, a lot of them would probably make it. But I've got so many cuttings here that I don't really know if I need to do this. I mean, it's really hard for me to throw out living plant matter, but at the same time, I don't really know if I need this. I'm probably gonna just compost it, you guys. So I'm gonna just put this to the side. Okay. I feel like a nursery. I've like never had this many propagations. <laughs> Making it rain propagations. Okay, now I'm gonna just pot these up. I'm gonna do them straight in soil instead of water because I don't know, I feel like I've propagated pothos a bunch of times and I've seen the roots and I know for me personally, I typically tend to not move things from water into soil when they're actually ready for that transfer. So they're more likely to actually turn into a plant that I end up keeping if I pot them directly into soil. So I just fill my little thing with soil and then this is the easiest thing in the world. I'm going to just take all of these little cuttings or as many as I can fit into this pot and just stuff them in here. Okay, so I've got this one too now, which has a mix of thicknesses of different little stem chunks. Some of them have the green and some of them look just like a stick, a brown stick. I couldn't help myself. Okay, so now I've got four full pots waiting to grow, plus this stick one, plus the original plant. So I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah, now I just need to water these. Cool, I feel really good about that. I might hang this back up right over here. <laughs> I feel so silly to be doing this, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay, I'm cracking up. I just put that plant back over there. <laughs> it begins again. Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to show you one last plant tip. So I haven't watered any of these new plants I potted up today, and they're all in pretty dried out soil. And if you've ever tried to repot a plant into fresh, dry soil that's got kind of like a, um, like a dusty type mix, sometimes it can be impossible for the soil to absorb water. The soil, the little particulate in the soil can create too much surface tension and it makes it so that the water just basically like runs through the pot and doesn't ever actually get absorbed by the soil. One of the ways that you can combat that if your soil is so fresh and dry <laughs> that it doesn't absorb any water, you can put a couple of drops of soap in a spray bottle and spray the surface of the soil with soapy water or even just mix in a little bit of soap with water that you pour onto the, onto the plant. Um, you don't wanna have it be like super soapy like you're doing laundry or have it be, you know, like you're washing your hands or anything like that. Like I just mean like a tiny bit of soap, but soap helps break up some of that surface tension and can help the water get absorbed more easily into the soil of the plant. If you've never experienced this before, it means that you're working with a good fluffy potting mix that absorbs water, but the mix that I always use has a lot of stuff in it that for some reason just takes a while to get started. So this is a little bit of that Castile soap. Um, it's just the Dr. Bronner's brand. I like to use this for my plant stuff because it doesn't have added scent and stuff like that in it. I take my, my watering can here and just put like a couple tiny drops of 
couple drops of soap in. That was like five little drops into my thing of water. And then I'm gonna go ahead and water my plants. Oh, I should put a tray. found some extra propagations on the ground. I'll stick them into the big pot. All right, you guys. So that is it for this video. I'm so excited that I was able to propagate this pothos and now I've got some propagations at this gigantium starting. So, and I actually really like the way that they look in this little jar. I feel like it's a really cute little um, cut foliage look. It almost looks like a little allocation to me or something. So, not mad about that. Um, I'm glad that I was able to take care of it. I would love to know what you guys are propagating these days. If it's a whole huge plant or some cuttings of a favorite plant or a plant that you almost were gonna throw out but then decided to chop up into a million pieces. I don't know, I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. For the people that have already been subscribed and have been commenting on my videos and lending support and enthusiasm, I just wanna say thank you so, so much you make this channel and this whole YouTube experience a really awesome place. So thank you. And I hope you all are having a really fantastic week. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye.